Let's talk about Veeam availability for VMware. A solution that allows the backup and restore of VMware virtual machines from the Veeam backup and replication user interface. Some of the features include application-aware image-based backup, end-to-end -end encryption, and native tape support. In our demonstration, we'll look at connecting to the VMware environment, including vCenter or ESXi host, creating a VMware backup, and the configuration of proxies based on their transport modes. Now, let's take a look at the demonstration. Here we are in our Veeam backup and replication console. Let's take a look at its integration with VMware. First, we're going to take a look at how we connect into the VMware environment. And to do that, let's look at an existing connection that's already been defined. Let's click and view the properties. Here you can see the DNS name of my vCenter and a pre-populated description in the dialog box below. On the next page, we'll add or select credentials that we're going to use to connect to the VMware environment. Now this particular account needs to be pretty powerful. Not only does it need to be able to work the backup jobs themselves, but it also needs to be able to create and clean up snapshots. You'll also note down at the bottom that we're connecting on port 443, which is the default VMware web services port. If, however, your VMware web services port is configured differently, you'll need to change that. If I press apply and finish here, it would reconnect us into the environment, which generally takes a few minutes, so I'll just press cancel out of here. If I needed to add a second VMware environment, I could do that by adding an additional server, clicking add server, but I'm right mouse clicking on the white space to get this menu to come up. I'm going to choose VMware vServer, and you can see that I can add another vCenter, a standalone host, or if I was a service provider, I could even connect with a vCloud director instance. I'll click vSphere here, and you'll notice it takes us to the screen that we were previously on. There is an additional option here, which is SSH connection. The SSH connection would be required if we were connecting to a standalone host. We're just going to cancel out of here. Now let's take a look at the backup proxies. They're actually responsible for doing all the work of the backups themselves. I'll right mouse click on this backup proxy and go into properties. You can see that this has been deployed on a Windows server. Now we'll move over and click on the button to choose for transport mode. Here there are three actual modes, direct access, virtual appliance, and network. There are additional how-to videos about the transport modes available. You can find them under Learn on Veeam.com. If we click Choose Next to connect a data source, we can find out which data stores this proxy is actually connected to. Maybe there's one that we do not want it to connect and pull data from. We can manually set that here. If we look at the maximum concurrent tasks, that tells us how many VMDK files we're able to pull from at a specific point in time. Let's go ahead and click Next, and we can look at traffic rules. Basically, a traffic rule says any Veeam component connecting to another Veeam component has to follow this set of rules. For example, this default internet rule. It says any traffic going over their internet is going to be encrypted, which just makes sense. If we click down on this option, Manage Network Traffic Rules, it takes us into the global settings of the network traffic rules. Now we've clicked Finished, and that covers the backup proxies. Let's take a look at a VMware backup job. Just click on Backup, and then we've got our jobs. Let's right mouse click on it and choose Edit. Now it's got a name and a description, and we can choose which virtual machines we're backing up with this job. And you'll also notice there's a folder listed there. This is a VMware folder. We're actually pulling the data from that folder and any VMs inside that folder we're going to include in the backup job. I've also added one specific extra VM. So if I click Add, we're able to see some of the options that are very familiar to our vSphere users from the client side. Along with picking from hosts and clusters, we can also select from the VMs and templates folder, the data stores and the VMs themselves, or choose VMware vSphere tags. Now that we've reviewed those options, let's go ahead and press cancel. If we click next, it will take us into storage. 
This allows us to choose the backup proxy, the repository with which we're going to store this data in, the number of restore points, as well as the secondary destination for this job itself. This is an onward job that allows us to follow the 321 rule. Three copies of the data on two separate independent medias, one copy of it off-site. We also have some guest processing options. We can enable application-aware processing and agentless application-consistent backup, meaning that we're going to get the data that's sitting in memory right now written down on the disk, so that in the event we want to recover this from a backup, it's in a ready state with less chance of a blue screen of death. We do need credentials in order to access this VM, and you can either add them or select them from this pull-down menu. Here we can choose our scheduling options for the frequency we want to back up this particular set of virtual machines, and I'll click Apply and Finish. These are just some of the options for the backup job. You can find additional how-to videos specifically on application-aware backups by searching Learn on Veeam.com. Veeam also has storage integration available with some of our storage partners. If your VM data store is sitting on one of our integrated partner storage devices, we're able to integrate with those storage snapshots in order to do things such as recoveries or backups from the storage snapshots themselves. It can take a lot of load off of the backup in the production environment by leveraging these snapshot capabilities. There are additional videos specifically on backup from storage snapshots and other integrations within the storage technologies. They can be found on Veeam.com as well. Another thing to point out for VMware environments is we have data lab capabilities. The data labs allow us to power up an isolated environment and to test to make sure our backups are in a safe state. It allows us to test our VMware replicas to make sure that they're going to be able to be used in a failover situation. It also allows us to create on-demand sandboxes from backup files, snapshots, or from our replicas. It is a very powerful tool. If you're checking our backups, that technology is called Sure Backup. Here's an example of a Sure Backup job. The last thing I wanted to mention is our recovery capabilities. We have all kinds of recovery capabilities inside VMware vSphere environments. If we take a look at this, we can do recoveries from backups or replicas. Let's take a look at the recoveries that are available from backups. We're able to do whole virtual machine restores, including things like instant VM recovery, which is going to power on that virtual machine directly from a compressed dedupe backup file. We're able to do entire VM restores and even restore our VM virtual machines into an Amazon EC2 instance or into Microsoft's Azure virtual machines. We have guest file recoveries for all kinds of different file systems. And we have application item recoveries that allow us to dive into our backups and pull out very specific items down to things like an attribute from Active Directory. We can also do some of these recoveries from our replicas and even from storage snapshots. Now, take a look at the restores from replicas. You can see that we can do our fail over and fail back here as well. We can do guest file recoveries and those same application item recoveries. Truly some very powerful tools. We have a whole series of how-to videos on how to do these specific recoveries and they're all available on Veeam.com. I hope you've enjoyed these demos and we'll see you in the next video.